Hi, it's Paula from Paula Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My friend have asked me to make some memory cushion covers and she gave me those two shirts. So one of those shirts she caught up already somewhat and the other one is still in uh, one piece. Um, the size of the cushion covers she would like me to make are 18 inches so I will be aim aiming for 18 and a half inch unfinished uh, block. Uh, there's quite a lot of fabric on the shirt, so you can kind of play around with it. Uh, I do want to use the front of the shirt as a close-up of those pillows, so I don't have to create anything extra. So I've got all of those pieces to, to use for that. Um, as you can see, those shirts are very different, but also quite dark. Uh, so I kind of want to come up with something to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, so the method I will be using is what I call a puzzle piecing and I did write an article about it and also um, there was one previous uh, tutorial where I used that method to put things together. I will link that in the description below. So the first step I will do, I will cut all the available fabric into um, squares and rectangles going with my magic uh, numbers. So anything what is uh, finish divided by two. Uh, obviously I will leave the front to use as a back of my uh, uh, cushion covers but for the rest I will just cut it up and then I will put it together and and that could have been all uh, what I will do to create those cushions but obviously I want to make it a little bit more interesting so I will add extra detail in the process and I will show you how I'm doing it. Now I'm just doing the cushion covers which will be 18 inches when finished. Um, you can obviously use that for a, a tote bag or maybe you want to make a bigger cushion cover then you just add elements uh, to make it the size you need or you can make a multiplication of certain size uh, to make a, a, a quilt so you can use that technique anywhere you need but I will just show you on that uh, smaller project so like I've mentioned I will iron everything out the bits I need and I will cut it into squares the, la the biggest square I will go with uh, is will be six and a half inch because actually 18 inches um, cushion is quite small so I don't need bigger pieces so it's either gonna be six and a half inch square four and a half inch square uh, two and a half inch square two and a half by four and a half two and a half by six and a half I'm just going with my magic number method here um, and I will do that and I will try to puzzle lay them out and then we'll add an extra detail just to make it more interesting. So I've managed to cut number of um, six and a half inch uh, squares. I've got some four and a half inch squares. I've got two and a half by four and a half, six and a half by two and a half and two and a half inch squares all according to my standard magic numbers uh, trays. And this is the first layout I kind of was able to set up. So I'm using big six and a half squares here and lots of two and a half by six and a half, two and a half by four and a half and small squares. And that's the layout I will sew in. But I would like to add a little bit more pop to that block. Um, I only have got two fabrics, so kind of there's only so much you can do with the fabric itself. And that fabric also is not, is not that colorful. So what can I do? So I thought I will use some of my um, small squares I had in my uh, sewing uh, bucket. Uh, th those are squares also from the um, shirts, just different colors. And I will do some primary points here. I only will do them for that middle block here, because uh, as you can see I've got a little bit of um, pattern going on there with those um, other uh, shapes, so I don't want to cover that. But because this square is just a big square here, I will do some primary points here and they will kind of when I sew it all together they will go towards that block. So I will have a two here, two here and two here so I need eight of those pieces. So I will show you how I work through that. So I will take it now to my sewing machine so we can work through the process of uh, doing all of those pieces. Uh, I will first kind of set, concentrate on this bit here because there's more work uh, to, to kind of complete that. And then I will just take those individual bits, sew them together bring them back and this is basically a, later a nine patch to sew together into one big block so that's not that complicated and then I will be ready to put my uh, second block uh, layout which is going to be different because I don't have any more of those big squares <laughs> so we'll see how it goes so this is my center block here and I've got eight of those uh, two and a half inch squares which I will now use iron to uh, make them into the shape I need. So literally just folding that square on diagonal 
and then into half itself that means that all that side obviously is uh, free of the fraying and this will be sewing into the seam and I can use those to make that block look a little bit more interesting I'm wondering whether I will also add some thread painting so um, that's the last bit you do when you put all of the uh, blocks together so I will see how it looks when I'm finished uh, stitching and then I will go from there but for now just a little bit of interest uh, I could add more of those uh, prayer points but like I said all, except of that middle block all the other parts of that block are quite already they've got things happening there different shapes so I think it will be alright like that but by all means if you feel like you like more uh, you can obviously add more, whatever you like them. Okay, so all my prairie points are ready. I've got four of those, the same color, and I did look in my bucket and I didn't have a more of those squares, so I'm just going to use uh, what I've got. And those are the same, and those are not the same, but very similar. Anyway, so what I want to do is place them the way I like them to see. I, I could add more, maybe three, and then you can also use this kind of fold here to overlap them. It's up to you how you will set them up. Uh, what you want to do is make sure you leave here a uh, space for your seam allowance. So I'm going to start, actually I will do one more thing. I will uh, kind of mark myself where my middles are so I can see where I should have my parry points. This fabric is very dark. I will just use this chalk here uh, to mark where my middles are just to help with the kind of more evenly layout but that will also depend how many of those uh, prayer points you want to add obviously so if I put this one here so I'm, I'm probably good almost inch here away from the edge so I'll be okay then I will just choose one of the other ones to put on the other side and uh, what I will do, I will just pin them here for now whilst I'm setting them up and I'll kind of go around that block and do the same thing all around and the next step is going to be just baste them on the sewing machine so basting stitch you're using is a long straight stitch. Normally you use probably about two or two and a half setting for your stitching. I like go with two when I'm piecing. Uh, but for the basting part you go with three or four because it's not there to hold that in place forever. It's just to hold it until you stitch the edges of that block uh, together so it doesn't have to be a very strong stitch. Okay got it all planned out what I wanted to go with so like I said I'm stitching less than quarter inch allowance uh, you, because you want to obviously uh, hide that stitch later but it's quite a long stitch so I'm going up to like four it's literally just to hold that in place uh, so it doesn't move when I will be adding other elements to this block So this is what my center piece looks like uh, and now I will go back to my uh, design table and just bring one of those sections at the time, the one which is uh, built from many pieces and just sew it together. Uh, it's very easy for with the magic numbers because they all will fit. Um, just a reminder, I have written a book about magic numbers. This is the book, it's got 30 easy blocks, it's all squares and rectangles, it's got the explanation of the theory about the magic numbers, what sizes you need to do, uh, some tips and tricks on how to get your um, scraps organized and how to keep them manageable, uh, so it's all there for you. And also got some uh, coloring pages and some uh, graph papers you can build your own project here at the end. You can mix and match those blocks because they are all the same size uh, so you can use 
five blocks of number five and three blocks of number seven, whatever blocks you like, and make and kind of build a uh, quilt like that, or just do one block from each, and that will work uh, too. The book is coming with its own playlist. You can scan the code; it takes you to the playlist with where I've put uh, tutorials about each of those blocks and also how you can um, use them up. Some inspirations there. Uh, how they can look when put together. So I do recommend the book. Book is available on Amazon, so everywhere in the world. Uh, I will put the link in the description below to my website when I've put some of the uh, links available and so you don't have to search for it and also a little bit more detail about the book. Okay, so now I'll bring those other sections and I will work through those until I'm ready to put my blog together. Okay, so as you can see I've stitched all my um, rows and now I'm kind of back to the columns. So for those uh, prairie points to go inside as I wanted them, what I need to make sure is that my seam uh, uh, direction here is it's going outside here on both sides, otherwise the, the prairie points will go towards the other side and that's what I don't want. So. So that's what I need to be careful here, that they are going in the right direction and that will hold them in place the way I want them. So when I put this bit on top, uh, I want this seam here go there, so this seam will need to go down. You can obviously take it to the iron board now in between the sewing as well. I like not to, but uh, it will obviously help also to keep the seams in place the where you need them. So this one will go down, we'll keep the other one up. Okay, so this is the another seam I need to make sure that they go in the right direction. So the bottom one, the one you cannot see, need to go towards me. So the one here on top needs to go away from me. And then as, as per usual, I always put the bit I've sewn already on top of the previous one, or on the top I'm, of the part I'm going to be stitching to, because then I can clearly see which way my seams have gone and I will just match them on the other side. So. Uh, I don't have to kind of remember about it again, I just need to look at which way the seams are going. Okay, so let's have a look how it came out. It does look pretty nice. So when I'm going to uh, iron now those seams here before I start quilting it, I just need to make sure that they're going to the outside as well and that will keep those prairie points to go to the inside of my uh, block. I think that looks pretty nice, so I just need to work out um, another layout I can do from the remaining pieces from the smaller bits I've got. And then also I would like to work out some sort of um, focus point again. It not necessarily will be prairie points again, I just need to think about it and I'll show you what I come up with. Okay, I've got laid out the other uh, pieces to create my 18 inches or 18 and a half unfinished block. Uh, the only problem is that um, I'm missing some sections here. I'm, I need another 2 inches to be added here because at the moment I've got 4, 4 and 2 which is 10. 
and I need 12 like here I've got six and a half inch six and a half inch here so it's 12 and a half so I need another slices here um, so kind of to go with that a uh, color uh, pop color uh, from the other cushion cover uh, I've got some red uh, fabric this is a shared fabric I had in my own boxes so just a little bit of pop color in here uh, in between just to make it a little bit more kind of colorful but again it's matching with the other one and I think it will look uh, pretty nice so I will just match kind of what I've done here so this is gonna be how that cushion cover will finish uh, when it's done I think it's quite nice and actually on this one I will do some uh, thread painting the other one I don't think it needs that here I think because there are no uh, 3D <laughs> kind of elements like with the other cushion I will add a little bit of trade painting here so uh, sewing wise um, what I will do so here we've got those elements which are four inches four inches four inches so this can be just sewn together in those rows like this and then obviously those two pieces together then I will sew this column separately and then I will add it, uh, add it all, all together so I will record it so you can kind of watch me putting it all together. Um, I like to chain piece everything as much as I can. It might be sometimes confusing, especially when you have a lot of elements. So, if, you know, if that's what happens, just slow down and just do one thing at a time. It has to work for you, so just do the way you like it. So before we carry on with the project, let's just round up where you can find me and how you can support my work. First of all, please subscribe to my channel and watch uh, videos as I'm posting them without skipping the adverts, please. Please comment against the videos because that helps to push them out to wider audience and don't forget to share with your quilting friends. Join my network either on Facebook or Instagram, all the links how and where are in the description below. Where you see my posts, either on Facebook or Instagram, please like, share and comment on them. If you like to add something extra, I've got now membership available through the YouTube. You can also use a super thanks on YouTube or buy me a virtual tea, coffee or lunch uh, using a form on my website. You can also support me by subscribing to my newsletter via my website. That will help me to notify you when I publish new videos or blog posts or maybe there are some items available to purchase on my website. However you decide to support this channel, thank you very much for being here and I hope you enjoy the content. Okay, so this is what the uh, block looks like now. So that's the one and that's the second one with the 
extra triangles. I actually quite like that uh, bit now here. Uh, I did iron them to the inside as mentioned before and when I will be quilting it I will probably do something to kind of keep those maybe in place but I don't know yet. I might even stitch them by hand, use some uh, maybe embroidery thread, I don't know. Um, but I think as, look, as good as it, as it looks as a design because of the fabrics themselves they're not quite you know contrasting I think I would like to do something more with it so I've got a one inch strips here from the solid fabric and I've chosen red because I think it will add a necessary amount of pop to my uh, cushion covers and um, I've chosen also one inch because if I, I, I don't want to expand that block the block is big enough uh, it's 18 and a half inches that's what I need for my cushion cover so if I use one inch strip is basically uh, going to bring me back to that 18 and a half inch uh, design. If I have used wider strip the, the kind of the, the, the cushion cover would be bigger and that's what I don't want. So I will do a very simple thing here. I will just use random place somewhere to cut it. Um, you can cut straight, you can cut a little bit under angle. I think I will go a little bit under angle and I cut it into two places for now. One here and here maybe a little bit more straighter but again it doesn't matter, it's all about improvisation here. And I will add that strip here. Like I said, we will lose half an inch here for the seam, so it's not going to be very uh, thick, that strip, but it should be okay. And then I will add second strip here. And again, this is more or less how it will look. And when I do this, when I stitch it back, I will turn it around and I will add another kind of cut here. So I will have, so I will have something what we did similarly in this block with the broken crayons where we've added kind of strips uh, back in. So let me take you to the sewing machine and let me show you how to stitch it so those halves uh, will come fairly um, even. Because obviously we could work with it a little bit that I could move it, it doesn't have to come to the same point but maybe you would like to have it in the same point so let's work it out how to do it okay so first I will stitch my uh, strip to this part and I will stitch this strip to this part so here with that first stitch uh, as far as your strip is obviously sticking out a little bit from both sides we're good to go there's no measurements here the measurement will be or, or kind of more careful stitching will be when we start adding uh, those pieces together so let's do that so I'm using a quarter inch allowance here, like I've mentioned, when I stitch all of it, I will have that half inch strip in the middle, uh, but the block itself is not going to be bigger. So once it's stitched I am going to take it to the iron board and iron it nicely and flat. We need that for this part, like I said, because I'm not going to be scoring it up later and I don't want to uh, have it too much wonky here with, with coming out. We want to be a little bit more precise with this project. So I will take it to the iron board and I'll show you the next step. Okay, I've got my pieces here. I've stitched the red fabric, so first of all you want to trim whatever is sticking out and you want to obviously align it with whatever fabric is kind of stitched to the red because you may have other pieces there, they might be sticking out a little bit more or less here so you just want to align with that fabric which is the closest to the red one nice edge there and we do that on the other side as well Do it on the other piece. Okay, so let's just lay them out the way they coming in together. That's one side, second and third. I will start stitching on this side. It's just gonna be easier. So here I kind of cut almost straight, so it will be fine to just to put it on top and uh, stitch it as it is. 
now if you really want your seams exactly here on the other side you may need to uh, pin it so what I suggest you can do is uh, take a pen which is either water soluble or heat re removable and just go trace your seam here on this piece trim and then do the same thing on the bottom and really you should do it in all of the junctions where the seams are because then when you put this piece on top you can kind of align your stitching line here with that mark, pin it and that's going to be exactly where you want that other side to come out now I am not that fast uh, with perfection so I will just make sure my top and bottom aligns so like I said with this piece fairly straight stitching because I fairly straight cut it so there will be no problems in here so let me quickly stitch this bit and I will show you how I tackle where it's uh, more on the angle okay so with this side I will need some markings and I will actually put my red on top it's just going to be easier to sew this way than other way around so what I want to do this is how I'm going to be stitching so I will mark where is the quarter inch on this red piece uh, from the edge so it is here that's my quarter inch mark you can put pin or you can just use a pen or pencil here uh, we'll be stitching on top of it so then here I will just align my sides uh, on the straight lines but then I will shift this down until my mark goes on the line of the fabric I've got under so, so as you can see I'm not stitching this way I'm not just aligning the tops of it it's where that mark I've made is uh, where is where I need to start stitching so this there's a sticking out angle here this is higher than the fabric below and that's where my needle will go and hold this piece in place and like I said if you do want to have a precise seam so you want those pieces to meet in the right places uh, you need to mark your seams uh, and then pin it so you kind of you might need to stretch something you might need to push a little bit something because if you're stitching something what is just one piece to something that's got seam in, in it there is going to be a little bit of movement there so you kind of control it with your pins now like I said I'm not that fast so I'll just stitch those two pieces together and see how it looks As I'm coming to the end here, I'm looking at the bottom part of my seams here to make sure that again I've got that bottom bit a little bit on the angle that they are not finishing in the same spot here on this side. Um, there is a little bit of that fabric sticking out on where that mark of the quarter inch is going to be. I've got a few more tutorials I did when I was stitching something on an angle so I, would li I will link them in the description below so if you like to watch some more on that subject it will be there for you in the uh, description so this is what it looks like with those first two lines I think it's adding a little bit more uh, interest there I'm happy with it so I'll add another line somewhere here and another line somewhere here again direction anywhere it will go is a little bit of improv game here uh, so let me do it now and I will show you how it looks when it's finished. So here it is a finished uh, block or cushion cover however I want to look at it. It can be obviously a block of the bigger quad actually. That will look very cool if you have uh, different locations of those uh, lines on each of the blocks. So, and this is the second one also look very good so you can either make a mix of those with, with this detail in the middle or just one of those. Uh, as a big block to go in the quilt and they will look very very good I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial on magic numbers in memory blocks uh, I think you can use that easily to kind of match with any type of fabric or any amount of fabric you have uh, just a little bit of you know mash up here and obviously all of those magic numbers will go together nicely and you can create new designs I will carry on with those to make them 
into actual cushions I will pop another uh, quick video when they are done so you can have a look how they actually finished uh, I might add some other bits and pieces when I'm quilting it so I will show you and tell you all about it in that uh, second video thank you very much for watching me today and see you next time thank you for watching I hope you will share this tutorial subscribe if you haven't done so happy sewing and see you next time